Hey, it's me, Zanov, and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition Legendary Difficulty Survival Mode Playthrough. How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm doing pretty good myself. It's currently early, early morning where I am, and I have some people around me, so I'm not going to be, or I'm going to try and tone down my usual flamboyant, nice and loud self, just for the sake of the people around me because it is early morning and you know you can't be a total you can't just completely ignore them so I am going to be a little bit more quiet and you might also notice I I can't tell whether you'll notice or not this video will be kind of a test for it I also have the fan on in the background the first time I've allowed myself to chuck the fan on because here in Australia during summer it can get pretty dang hot <laughs> <laughs> and it is pretty impossible to be using a big computer that's just like, you know, basically a huge heat generator and then just sit in the room, close off everything so there's no echo in the mic and yada, yada, yada. And then it just becomes a little sauna. It just becomes a little sweat fest trying to record here. And I am not the kind of person that enjoys just sweating because of the heat. Like, if you're doing hard work or whatever, then and you sweat, then that's all good, that's fine. But just sweating for the sake of sweating, just because it's hot, it's just the worst, I don't know, the worst kind of sticky feeling I feel like you can get. I just hate any kind of being sweaty and sitting in clean clothes or sitting in a clean chair and being all sweaty and... And also, as I said, it coming from absolutely nothing. But in any case, for this episode, what we are going to be getting up to is, you might have noticed in the last episode, we had a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of useless, or well not useless stuff, but a lot of stuff, basically, that we need to try and get rid of. So that's what the start of today's episode is going to be about. It's going to be about clearing out my inventory Clearing out good old Hilda, and we'll be checking in on the farm. We'll be getting some smithing done so we can get some levels. We can just crack out some levels. Pending how those levels go and how we're tracking in terms of our main level being, I think it's 52 right now. Yeah, 52. We might even travel to the College of Winterhold to buy some more levels in restoration. It all kind of just depends. And then after we get a lot of the personal administration out of the way, sorted our lives out, all that kind of stuff, we will go and talk to the Jarl of Whiterun to begin, be, well not to begin, but actually continue before the storm. And that will be... Uh, I was hoping you could help me. It seems I've lost a ring that also that means I stay alive. alive. And that is sorry. I was just listening to them. Sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slip in here. Greetings, my friend. Good, good. Yeah, and uh, we will be con getting on with the main quest line, which uh, I think being level 52 and doing all the things we have done is probably the longest I've ever left it to be honest to be completely honest I don't think I've left it so long before I mean there have been playthroughs where I've just completely ignored the main quest line and completely ignored the fact of you know being dragonborn and yada 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 all the rest of it we can sell these or oh, which should we sh sell actually yeah we'll just sell these um, and being dragonborn and all the rest of it, uh, but in terms of in just intending to do a lot of things with a character and then just not doing a lot of those things, or I'm not doing the main quest line to start off with, yeah, I've never really left it this long. My goodness, I cannot believe some of the stuff we got from there. Like, look at this. Summon Daedra up to level 36 are sent back to Oblivion. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. And that is these are some cool looking textures too. Burns a target for 45 points. Targets on fire take extra damage. My goodness. Such a cool looking sword too. Alright. Uh, what else have we got to sell you that I don't want to drop off? Scrolls. Uh, yeah, you can have it. Just take it, my friend. Just take it. Safe travels. Safe Travels, Landstrider, Safe Travels, Argonian Friend. <laughs> uh, let's... Hmm. 
750 gold, so none of these guys are particularly rich. Again, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again. When we get into some modded playthroughs in the future, I will more than likely be uh, uh, putting in the mod of more gold for merchants because it is just crazy how quickly these guys run out of gold. You'd think they'd have a heck of a lot more, but they don't yet. Let's just sell it off. There we go. Not going to need ebony ingots anytime soon, even though we are getting into some smithing. And Bray and Shay, my friend, how are you doing? Let's... Hmm, what do we want to drop off to you? Let's continue selling some of these jewels, although I want to keep the flawless stuff. Just because... Just because that's about it. That's, all, that's the only uh, reason I got, is just because... Oh my goodness, come on now. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Um, and you are now cleaned out as well. Shall do, my friend, shall do. Thank you for the friendly advice. I'll take it as friendly advice. And blacksmith, my friend, I have come to see you to, uh, to sell you a whole bunch of stuff, actually. Sorry. And I uh, no doubt that you are good with your hands and you can perform miracles, as you say. Uh, but I am just interested in taking your gold off you, to be honest. Now, I don't think there's much else I can sell aside from getting into... Actually, let's get rid of this kind of thing. Get rid of that kind of thing. Extra, yeah, keep that. Any kind of potions we don't really want. Yeah, see, stuff like that. It's nice and cheap and we can kind of just get rid of it. I don't know how much I'm going to actually need these resist cold and resist shocks. I might keep the resist cold and resist fires, but resist shock, I think we're pretty. I think we're pretty safe, to be honest. To be honest, I don't think that's something we really have to worry about. So we'll go, we'll sell him two. We'll just, uh, no, we'll sell him one. He's too poor. Too poor. Can't give it to you. Uh, actually, whatever. No, we'll just sell him two. Yep. Lucky, lucky guy, hey? Aren't you lucky you got a friend like me? Now, let's try to... What do we want to... So we've got... We want to end up in Whiterun. I want to drop off some stuff at Hendraheim. And then I also want to drop off some... Or not drop off, but check in at our farm at Golden Hills Plantation. So, what we're going to do is... I'm going to quickly run in here. You guys can probably already guess where I'm going with this. Oh, a few drinks. You're you're a bad you're a bad little tempter. You are. Let's go. I'd like to rent a room. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Thanking you. And actually, we'll get some food off of her as well. Food for the hungry. Thanking you. And we'll go cooked beef, cooked catfish, grilled chicken breast, and rabbit haunch. And we'll go venison chop too. Good, you had a fair, you had a fair few things. Sweet. Now let's run upstairs and have a quick little snoozy poo, a quick little sleep. Uh, we don't want it to be. Uh, we'll go 24 hours. Really want to make sure we're well rested. I was going to sleep for just a couple because we want to make sure we're well rested. We also want to make sure it's daytime so it's nice and warm outside. Tal and Jay going up there to uh, make sure we're not stealing anything. Don't worry, my friend. We are not. Let's go some cooked beef to restore some of that hunger. We're now satisfied. And let's go a potato soup. You're well fed. And here we go. For those of you who don't know in survival mode, if you are well rested, if you are well fed and you are warm, sometimes it will let you... Unfortunately, it does not seem like today is our day, so let's run out the front. I do fancy myself a bit of the adventuring type, to be honest. I have done a few adventures now. Thoran veralta has got a few adventures under his belt. But what we are going to be doing again is just quickly testing to see if we can... Nope. Not looking like it's going to be our friend. So what we are going to do instead is a fast travel to or hire a carriage to Whiterun. Because that is the closest place to Hendraheim. Either that or Markarth. I think they're pretty similar. To be honest, let's have a quick look actually. I think they're pretty similar. 
Yeah, Markarth's probably just a touch closer, but it's nice and flat getting to Whiterun. You don't really have to deal with any mountains or anything. So let's climb on back and be off. And now, let's jump on good old Glady and jump over this little fence. And let's keep on moving through to Hendraheim. Probably going to be a little bit before we get there. And I don't want to keep talking just for the sake of talking, because as I said, we got some people sleeping and they won't be too appreciative of an early wake up. So I'll just see us when we get there. And here we are in beautiful Hendraheim, ruined by these ugly, disgusting looking things. Let's run down here and let's get good old Hilda in the room with us. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Where are you, Hilda? You have an awesome army set, a bit of army set, an armor set that I want. Here we go. Ar Ebony plate armor. Yes, yes. And yes, we'll also take that as well. Yes, yes. And take that, take that, take that. And leave the rest to sell, I believe. Now, where can this go? I reckon I do have to sort this place out. I probably do have to sort it out. Will I sort it out? I'll be honest with you. Probably not. I just wanted to hold all my cool stuff. Let's put you on, you on, you on, and you on. And I don't think there's anything else. Wow. What a sick looking set of armor. I absolutely love the variation. Let's go to you as well. And let's just chuck the random stuff on you, hey? So what have we got? We've got Wraithguard, hey? You got yourself some pretty cool gaunt. Let's look at that. And you got yourself a Daedric helmet. How cool, how cool. Very cool is the answer. Awesome. <laughs> uh, now, let's try and see if we can... So that's where Dawnbreaker goes. That's where Mesa Morlag Bow goes. Dragonbane. Ebony Blade. Rufal Axe. Oh, we have the Rufal Axe and we have Woolen Drum. Where did I put the Rufal Axe? I cannot remember for the life of me. I cannot remember for the life of me. This might not be Mirax Sword. This might not be the Completionist playthrough. I might save the Completionism... Like, we'll still get a lot of stuff done on this playthrough, 100%. But I might save the completionist type playthrough for my next character, where we might... I probably won't be on survival mode just for the... Uh, what do you call it? The convenience of not having to, you know, run everywhere just to be able to... Because if it's going to be a 100% play through, try and get all the achievements, try and do all that kind of stuff. It will be crazy, crazy long if I go completionist or completionist on it. What have we got that's weighing us down so much? Is it it's definitely the weapons now, yeah. Okay. I can almost completely forgot about chucking the weapons away as well. So yeah, we might uh let's we might save the completionist uh kind of things for when we have our next character, I would say. Let's chuck that in there. Because this is all looking very mismatched and I'd like a little bit more time to kind of organize it and that kind of stuff as well. And I don't think we're going to have that uh, kind of... Uh, what do you call it? That kind of freedom, I guess. Because there's just, there's just so much time spent traveling and stuff that you don't want to spend it organizing inventory, if you know what I mean. It's just kind of how it is. Uh, yeah, let's definitely put you down here as well. And let's put a Daedric Dagger there too. Why not? Come on. Well, I guess we'll put it there. I guess we can't put one there. Oh, well. Uh, and let's... Let's chuck this there. There we go. Looking snazzy. Not really. All kind of mismatched and stuff, as I said. But it's all good. It's all good. It doesn't matter too much. As I said, the next playthrough will more than likely be the uh, the uh, big playthrough. Now, where did I put a whole, all the armor sets and all that? I think I put them in here. Yeah, so we'll chuck the Daedric Helmet in there as well. See if we need that resist fire enchantment. I wouldn't think we do, but it's just in case. Yeah, we don't. Okay, cool. So we can sell that. Satchel, pretty sure we got a ton of ingredients. We definitely do. 
Got a Daedra Heart in here as well. I think we've got way more Daedra Hearts. Yeah. From the, uh, the cause. The quest line we just finished. So in any case, let's stop with the Jibber Jabber. I've sorted myself out. I've taken all the stuff off Hilda. Carrier Weight's looking good. Yeah, Carrier Weight is looking absolutely fantastic. And we've got plenty of Septums. Let's go check in on the old farm. Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. So, we have just galloped our little legs all the way back to here. And let's have a look-see at how the farm is doing. Let's go talk to Ilya. I don't think that much time has passed, so I don't know if we're going to have that much money all saved up and ready to go. Oh. Hmm. Maybe that's how I get her and all of her stuff back, because she's carrying Vullendrung. <laughs> and I kind of need that, I guess, to put on my wall. I'm here to collect the plantation's profits. Good, 1, 000, that's still pretty dang good. My goodness. My goodness. Okie dokie. Let's see if these are ready to go. And they are. Let's see if the creep cluster is ready to go. And is it? It is. Okie dokie. So we're going to go through and we're going to do the tedium, the continuous the never ending the the consistent the the persistent the it the just the terribleness that it is trying to find the hitbox for the creep cluster we're going to continue that <laughs> and then after we do that we will go and harvest the rest and again i don't think we will make anything we will just chuck all those potions or all the ingredients away ready to absolutely just smash levels in alchemy once we can so take and take and take and take and i kind of want to leave it we might do one more complete harvest and then we'll smash out some potions because by then we'll have like, I don't even know, like a hundred and something potions. Or more than a hundred. We'll have well, almost 200, I think, actually. We'll have pretty much almost 200 potions to go and sell. And that is just going to be a terrible time. I'll probably just do a huge cut and try and sell all of them. But that will just be, that will be quite the, uh, the chore. That will be the definition of tedium. And just because I'm going to be completely transparent, I'm quite obviously also going to be doing the uh, the whole inventory reset thing where I quick load, uh, quick save, hit them, quick load, quick save, hit them, quick load. Because trying to, trying to run all over Skyrim and sell these things, uh, just not possible. Like, even the waiting two days just not possible either because for those of you that don't know it's also two days for an inventory to be reset and obviously just waiting two days in survival mode pretty much kills our character so we can't do that either but what we are we little but what we will do after we harvest this last thing sweet no no it's all good farm here you can just keep on plotting away keep doing what you're doing you, you guys are obviously doing well we're going to check the pantry cupboard and we're going to take that and take that and take that. And then we're going to chuck it all in this satchel. So we are getting quite a bit of ingredients here to make this fortify carry potion. It is going to be absolutely insane when we go to make it. So what's that already? That's 151 potions so by the next it'll be over 200 potions that we will have that we will be making it will be absolutely crazy considering we already have like 40 potions um and i might no 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 you as i said you're you're quite all right do not stress my friend do not stress um i'm not looking to to do anything what we might do is uh we'll go to white run as I said, we were going to do in interest of doing the... Uh, where, where do we go? It's back this way, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we'll go to Whiterun in interest of doing or starting or continuing the main little questy that we have. And what is this? Is this... This is the horse for the stable, isn't it? So what is this? This is like Gregory the Fifth. Just some random horse that we bought. Yeah. You're Gregory the Fifth. Congratulations. You're you're the uh, you're part of a long line of forgotten horses that let me down. 
No one's let me down. Well, no, all of you have let me down except Glade. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. Everyone's let me down except Glade so far. Glade is the only one that's been super consistent. He hasn't done any weird horse runaway. I'm going to hide from you mechanic annoying things. Uh, so you guys are the long line of forgotten horses, the forgotten Gregories. In any case, let's get to Whiterun. And here we are riding up to the front gates of Whiterun. What I might do while I'm here, just before we go up to the Yarl, is we will get some, uh... Oh, did ya? Yep, you and every single other stinky guard I've ever met has heard that. Yeah, you're considering joining up yourself, how about that? You and everybody else. We might get some smithing done. So, what we can do here is... We'll buy a whole bunch of... Mm, what do we want to buy, actually? I know there's the age-old uh, iron dagger thing. That might be what we have to stick with just for now until our smithing gets up enough so that we can get some perks and create some better stuff. So we'll go iron ingot. Yep. Yeah. We'll go iron ore. We'll go leather strips. And I'm not super concerned about all the money that we're giving it because obviously we have those potions. We can get it back. Don't so let's quickly the smelt these iron ores. Ah, and you know what I'm missing? I'm missing the warrior stone before I begin this little venture. So what we'll do, we'll make these daggers, because we might as well, excuse me, I am, I'm trying to use this now. Yeah, get out of the way of your own forge, thank you very much. I don't, claim to be the best uh, I don't care what you claim, to be honest, I kind of just want to make some stuff if you'll get out of my face. Thank you. Let's see how quick this goes up, so bang. Bang. The answer is not very much. I would say like maybe a few, a couple centimeters on my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab the warrior stone and we will be back and we'll see what kind of difference that makes. The Up the total of 50% uh, bonus on the learning smithing thing. We'll do that now. And here we are at the standing stones. So what we're going to be doing is, I believe the Mage Stone is currently in the Ethereal Crown. So what we will do is get the Warrior Stone and then the Lover Stone will go to the Crown and we'll have the Warrior Stone just on us in general, I believe. So Lover Stone removed, Warrior Stone added, Mage Stone removed, Lover Stone added. Yep, there we go. So the Lover Stone is in the crown now, in the crown now, and Warrior Stone is attached to our little Thorin Veralt personally. So after I can't, oh man, I cannot believe I literally. I suppose it was still kind of out of the way, but I was about to be like, I can't believe I literally ran, <laughs> went from Hendrheim to the farm to Winterhold uh, to White Run, and then back here. So I kind of doubled back a little bit, kind of wasted a little bit of time. <gasps> But hey, that's just survival mode for you. Let's get back to White Run and let's smash out some smithing. And here we are returning to White Run. Probably a little bit late for us now. So what we're going to do is we're going to run in and hopefully, yeah, there's definitely no body, uh, no, no body, no body attending the stalls. So we're going to run to the inn as usual. You know, the only times I've ever used inns in my entire life is this playthrough. Never, ever, ever had to rent a room ever before. Aside from, hey, I wonder what this is. Did it once and then, ah, oh, okay, that's cool. I never did it again. I'd like to rent a room, please. I'd also like to buy some food, please. Thanking you. Let's go down and we'll get the apple pie. We'll get the cooked beef. We'll get the chicken breast. We'll get the salmon steak. And what else? Nothing. Sweet. These last few times, these uh, innkeepers have had a bunch of... Oh, we also gave that cool uh, battle axe to uh, Uthgird. Uh, these innkeepers the last few times have had a good amount of food for us, so we are pretty much stacked when it comes to that department. So now we're well rested. Let's eat some food. Apple pie, cooked beef, cooked catfish. We have to be well fed by now. Not just satisfied, give me that well fed update, you're not going to do it. Okay, let's get some, this is where the apples come in. Yeah? Nope, guess not. Let's get some sweet roll going. You are well fed, there we go. 
to be honest, I think Thor and Varoth, I mean, sometimes we do go on like two or three day fasts, and then other times it just seems like he eats a bunch. I feel like he should be a bit, uh, a bit heftier than what he actually is. So, we're going to go down to Adrian Avici, and we're going to use this forge and see what kind of difference that standing stone has made. Are you ready? Pretty substantial, actually. That, that looks pretty substantial. Because you got to think about it. That's So it was... It would have been the 15% from Ancient Knowledge and the 15% from um, the Lover Stone. And then we've just gotten the Warrior Stone, which increases all skills again by 20%. So it's almost a doubling. It's not quite a doubling because it was originally at 30% progression and we've added 20%. So it's not quite doubling, but I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, and it looks like it's doubling and I'm... Don't tell me I was creating iron armor. Maybe that's why. I don't claim to be the yeah, the iron armor might have skewed that a little bit. But in any case, let's keep going with the... Why am I creating boots now? What the heck? Stay on iron dagger, please. Just stay there. Thank you. Thank you. So let's make that. And what we might do after I sell these back to you... Yes, you still have all that gold. Good, good, good. Let's sell you the iron daggers, yeah, and let's sell you that. Don't know why I made it, don't know why I made it, it just kind of happened. We will sell you that as well, because I'm not going to use it. And let's have a look-see, let's sell you a couple of these bad boys. Yep, take all your money back, thanking you. And now I'll let's go to the other shop. blacksmith. I will check inside the shop, because I do need some things. Then people realize, right? Yeah, you, it's like you've said that before. Let's go to you, and hopefully you've got a good amount of iron ingots. You sure don't, but we'll take it anyway. And let's go leather strips. We probably don't need that much. We'll say 15. Hopefully that's around about all good doing business. we need. And let's jump back outside. Let's... Oh, excuse yeah. me, friend. Excuse me. Let's jump back on the forge, and let's get going with the... Iron daggers. And bada bing, bada boom. Wowza. I can see this is going to take a while. So let me quickly have a look at how long it will take us to get to... So steel smithing. Dwarven smithing. Okay, all we need to get to is dwarven smithing, I'm pretty sure, actually. So... Um, and we've got three perks. Now, this is where I want to decide whether I go light armors or heavy armors. Can create elven armors and weapons at forges and improve them twice, twice as much. Can create scale and plate armor at forges and improve them twice as much. Can create glass armor at forges and improve them twice as much. Can create dragon armor and dragon bone weapons at forges and improve them twice as much. Let me quickly have a look at these these trees of heavy armor and light armor. So increases armor rate, heavy armor by 20%. So we already know that's just going to increase armor rating each time. Well fitted. 25% bonus if you're wearing a matching set or not a matching set, but all heavy armor. 50% less stagger. Additional 25% if wearing a match set and 10% a chance to reflect blows. Now what's up the left side? Fists of steel, unarmor attacks do extra damage. Half damage from falling if wearing heavy armor and conditioning heavy armor weighs nothing and doesn't slow you down when worn. So that's the perk I was thinking of that would be pretty dang good to get. Now let's have a look at light armor and see what kind of perks it has. So agile defender increases ar uh, light armor rating by 20%. Yep. Custom fit 25% armor bonus. Yep. Unhindered light armor weighs nothing and doesn't slow you down when worn. So that's at level 50 instead of level 70. Stamina regenerates 50% faster, additional 25% bonus and deft movement, 10% chance of avoiding all damage from melee attack while wearing all light armor. Hmm. Hmm. We might go... I'm thinking we might go light armor, to be honest. We might get the... We might get the uh, dwarf, the dwarven perk for smithing. Oh, go away. We might get the dwarven perk for smithing. But again, this is another thing I've never done is I've never done light armor. I've usually the main characters I've usually played have been either like a heavy armor, like single handed or two handed, just like juggernaut, like an orc or something or 
a mage. I've never really done the stealthy style. Like, I've done stealthy play before, but that's when I've had, like, just an all-round character. I've never done just specifically, like, the stealth thief style of gameplay. So what we're going to do is... We'll go with light armor because it'll switch it up a little bit for me. I never usually do it. I always go, I usually always go Daedric armor because I absolutely love Daedric armor. So we'll do that. We'll switch it up a bit. Um, that won't happen just yet though. I'll get the perk. Just checking to see what I have here. Iron ore. Yeah, so we'll make another three iron daggers, I think is what we had in iron ore. So, bada bing, bada boom, bada bop. And we'll make the three iron daggers. But what we'll do is... We'll get the perk for Dwarven Smithing, because I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the uh, best the best way to level your smithing. And Out. then we'll sell you Looking these you terrible daggers again. There you go. Those are all for you. Make sure you don't blunt them all at once. And you've got a fair bit of gold on you. Need to protect yourself? So, I'm going to sell these potions to you. How do you have all that gold? I thought we just I thought we just wiped you out completely. Or did you start sharing your inventory with your husband inside? I got no idea. I, but I'm almost certain we just wiped you out. Okay. Well, we'll sell you that anyway. Um Yeah, we'll leave that. Uh we'll go inside. No, what? What the heck? Come on. It's midday. You guys should be open. What are you doing? 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 Okay, we're going to leave that because that is... Actually, we'll see if we can go in the back way. Nope. Wait one more hour because I really want to take all of his money with my potions. Why is that locked? What the heck is going on, Adrian Avici? Okay. Oh, well. We'll leave it. Let's go up to Yorlin Greymane and we'll just take all of his gold with our potions... And yeah, what we'll do is, because we'll get the, the perk in, dwar in Dwarven Smithing, even though that's the heavy armor route, we won't actually go, obviously, heavy armor route. That is just to, um, that is just to be able to craft Dwarven things, because I'm pretty sure craft, it's like crafting Dwarven arrows or something is supposed to be the absolute best way to uh, level up got Smithing. What have you got for sale? Gods be, Gods be praised. It's either it's either dwarven arrows or like dwarven bows. It's something like that. But it's supposed to be the best way to level up your smithing, and it does go up a fair bit quicker than. Uh, and you're already out of gold. We'll give you one. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to level you up a fair bit quicker than the iron daggers. From memory, I'm pretty sure it does. So we'll uh, we'll have to set ourselves up for success on that one. We'll have to do a little bit of prep in another episode where I'll go around do some dwarven ruins, make sure I'm picking up all the dwarven metal ingots. You know, like the last dwarven ruins, well, there's a whole bunch of ingots I remember on like the table somewhere, but I couldn't pick them up because carry weight was terrible. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's why I forced myself to sort out my carry weight because that was upsetting and upset me quite a little bit, but it's all good. Now, we are going to get on, finally, and Irileth finally has a reason to be approaching us, because we're finally going to be getting on with this. So, Irileth, take it away. What's the meaning of this interruption? Jarl Balgoth is not receiving visitors. Yes, but I'm no visitor, you see. I have news from Helgen about the dragon attack. You know, the dragon attack that happened a few months back? Well, I'm finally here. <laughs> well, that explains why the guards let you in. Come on, then. The Jarl will want to speak to you personally. Good, 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 good. I'm counting on it now. Jarl Bolgriff. So, you were at Helgen. I was. You saw this dragon with your own eyes? I did indeed, my friend. I did indeed. Hmm. The dragon destroyed Helgen, and last I saw it was heading this way. The Imperials were about to execute Ulfric Stormcloak, then the dragon attacked. Uh, the dragon destroyed Helgen, and last I saw it was heading this way. Irileth was right. Say now, Proventus. Shall we continue to trust in the strength of our walls against the dragon? My lord, we should send troops to Riverwood at once. It's in the most immediate danger. Indeed. The dragon is lurking in the mountains. There is a provocation. He'll assume we're preparing to join Ulfric's side and attack him. We should Enough. not. I'll not stand idly by while the dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people. Irileth. Send a detachment to Riverwood at once. Yes, my Jarl. 
If you'll excuse me, I'll return to my duties. That would be best. Well done. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done White Run a service. I won't forget it. Here, take this as a small token of my esteem. There is another thing you could do for me. Suitable for someone of your particular talents, perhaps. Come, let's go find Faringar, my court wizard. He's been looking into a matter related to these dragons and rumors of dragons. Thank you, thank you. Let's do it. So... You might recall that at the very start of the game we did a little thing in Bleak Falls Barrow and you do that so that, you know, you kind of collect the Golden Claw on the way and you do that so that he doesn't send you doubling back to Bleak Falls Barrow like you usually would for this quest. Varengar, I think I've found someone who can help you with your dragon project. Go ahead and fill him in with all the details. So the Earl thinks you can be of use to me. Oh yes, he must be referring to my research into the dragons. I'd assume that's probably yes. what he's referring to. Someone to fetch something for me. Eh, yeah, careful well, with your words, sir. When I say fetch, I really mean delve into a dangerous ruin in search of an ancient stone tablet that may or may not actually be there. What does this have to do with dragons? Ah, no mere brute mercenary, but a thinker. Perhaps even a scholar? Archmage of Winterhold, when actually. When stories of dragons began to circulate, many dismissed them as mere fantasies, rumors, impossibilities. One sure mark of a fool is to dismiss anything that falls outside his experience as being impossible. But I began to search for information about dragons. Where had they gone all those years ago? And where were they coming from? So what do you need me to do? I, uh, learned of a certain stone tablet said to be housed in Bleak Falls Barrow. A dragon stone said to contain a map of dragon burial sites. Go to Bleak Falls Barrow, find this tablet, no doubt interred in the main chamber, and bring it to me. Simplicity itself. Oh, do you mean this old stone? Give dragon stone to Farangar. Ah, the dragon stone of Bleak Falls Barrow. You already found it. You are cut from a different cloth than the usual brutes they are foists on me. I got you the dragon stone. What next? That is where your job ends and mine begins. The work of the mind. Sadly undervalued in Skyrim. You're quite into yourself, aren't you, Farangar? Farangar. Oh, there you are. You sounded a lot closer. You need to come at once. A dragon has been sighted nearby. You should come too. A dragon. Okay, I'll tag along. Where was it seen? What was it doing? I'd take this a bit more seriously if I were you. If a dragon decides to attack Whiterun, I don't know if we can stop it. Let's go. Let's go. And let's have a look see here. So. Yurileth tells me you came from the Western Watchtower? Yes, my lord. Tell him what you told me about the dragon. No, oh, that's right. We saw it coming from the south. It was false. Faster than anything I've ever seen. What did it do? Is it attacking the Watchtower? No, my lord. It was just circling overhead when I left. I never ran so fast in my life. I thought it would have come after me, for sure. Good work, son. We'll take it from here. Head down to the barracks for some food and rest. You've earned it. Irileth, you'd better gather some guardsmen and get down there. I've already ordered my men to muster near the main gate. Good. Don't fail me. Yeah. There's no time to stand on ceremony, my friend. I need your help again. Happy to help. I want Happy to, to help. I with and help her fight this dragon. You survived Helgen. So you have more experience with dragons than anyone else here. I'm also playing I on legendary difficulty. The service you did for me in retrieving the dragon stone for Faringar. As a token of my esteem, I have instructed Avenici that you are now permitted to purchase property in the city. And please, 
Accept this gift from my personal armory. I should come along. I would very much like to see this dragon. No. I can't afford to risk both of you. I need you here working on ways to defend the city against these dragons. As you command. One last thing, Irelet. This isn't a death or glory mission. I need to know what we're dealing with. Don't worry, my lord. I'm the very soul of court. Sweet. And yes, we are the most experienced. Yeah, perhaps if you just weren't so terrible to talk to, uh, I would vouch for you and try and bring you along for the adventure. But you are just too into yourself for my liking. In any case, yes, we are the most experienced when it comes to dragons because we saw one at Helgen, but we're also playing on legendary difficulty and we also do like 0.5% damage output compared to everybody else. But hey, you know what? We do have the most experience, so we should tag along, hey? Yeah, legendary difficulty regardless. Let's uh, do it. Heimsker. Oh, Heimsker. I don't know why people, why so many people hate him. Like, I just, <laughs> I feel like, again, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, okay, let's liven up Skyrim. Let's, like, add some life to it. Yada, yada, yada. He's there screaming in the streets. It's adding something to the game. You know what I mean? Like, for me, that's really something that's really important. It just kind of feels like if he's there screaming, it's, I don't know, it just feels more alive to me, it just feels better, it just feels better to play, it just feels like there's stuff going on, you know what I mean? But so many people, and so many people I know as well, always just seem to kill him because they find him annoying. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that he does that little thing up there, it's cool. I, I, I enjoy it. Any, anyway, this is actually a small part that a lot of people actually always miss because they just run past straight to the Western Watchtower. So let's see what Irelith has to say. A dragon is attacking the Western Watchtower. A dragon? Wow, in for it. You heard right. I said a dragon. I don't much care where it came from or who sent it. What I do know is that it's made the mistake of attacking White Run. Heck yeah. But how scarred? How can we fight a dragon? That's a fair question. None of us have ever seen a dragon before or expected to face one in battle. But we are honor bound to fight it, even if we fail. This dragon is threatening our homes, our families. Heck yeah. You call yourself Nords if you ran from this monster. Are you going to let me face this thing alone? Nope. No, you're so dead. <laughs> We're so dead. The first dragon seen in Skyrim since the last age. The glory of killing it is ours. If you're with me. Now what do you say? Shall we go kill us a dragon? Yeah. Damn yeah. right. Let's move out. Let's do it. Okie dokie. Now, I don't think there's any more dialogue from them until we get there. They just get their little jog on. Just a little bit of pre-fatigue before the good old dragon fight. You know it. You know it and you love it. A good old pre-fatigue. I am well, well versed with the whole pre-fatigue for training kind of type deal situation. The whole pre-fatigue thing is just absolutely terrible. Um, so, it's going to be this way, and look at that watchtower that, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure isn't any different regardless of what time you come to, uh, to this part of the map. I'm pretty sure it's always destroyed, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We're going to park Glade a little ways away, because I don't want him to, uh, you know, feel like he has to fight this dragon, because he definitely doesn't. He definitely, definitely doesn't, and I definitely don't really want him to, to be honest, either. I don't want him to run over and... Because he'll, he'll, what what will happen is, with the horse mechanic, is he'll do a little bit of fighting, and then he'll get hurt a little bit, and then he'll just run to the other side of the map, <laughs> and I won't be able to find him. And I'm just not I'm just not down with that. I'm just... Uh, while we're waiting for him, let's catch these butterflies. You know, I don't really actually use you guys in ingredients. I just like taking your wings. How sadistic is that? You're just like, hey, butterfly, butterfly, just let me uh, stay, stay still. And then you just tear off their wings for some kind of potion. And here they are. That didn't take too long. I thought we were going to have to wait a few hours for them to get here, but they're here now, which is good. Hopefully not all of them have to be here, though, because it seems like there's only the one fella. No signs of any Sweet, right we don't. Now, but it sure looks like he's been here. It sure does. I know it looks bad, but we've got to figure out what happened. There they are. If that dragon is still skulking around somewhere, it's 
Spread out. Look Spread out. We need to know what we're dealing with. Let's get ready, peeps. Now, this dragon is going to be the first dragon we fight in the entire game. Still here somewhere. Porky and Paul just got grabbed when they tried to make a run for it. Here he comes again. Now, this is why I wanted to... That looks like it's a ice dragon. Yeah, usually... Yeah, it's a white one. Usually, uh, when by the time you do come down to this part of the game for, for this quest, usually it's just a very, very base level dragon. But he's looking like he's a bit of a tough boy, actually. And I believe his name is Mulemanir or something. Let's give him a whack. Yeah, Miller here. Let's give him a whack, see what that does to him. It does a decent amount. So we'll do that to him. What we're going to do, though, and this is why I did not want to start this as a mage character until we had at least these two fellas with us. Because you can have the Flame Atronach, but while the dragon's running around, they miss almost every single shot that they fire whereas these guys because the the shock spell is instantaneous they actually hit it while it's flying around and it's extremely handy because it also what it does is it drains the dragons of their shouts as well it drains the dragons of a lot of their shout power because they are oh come on got him because they have a i'm pretty sure how the the game works is they have a magical bar just like like we do and their magicka is in the form of their shout. So if you hit them with a whole bunch of shock spells, they too, again, will... Uh, they won't have any uh, any ability to hit you with ice and stuff. Wow, they did not do much. That magicka resistance is coming in so handy. Usually, uh, uh, especially with no armor, usually something like that just absolutely smashes you. Like it's an instantaneous death. But again, all that magicka resistance we have coming in absolute clutch come on land again what i'm going to do here though is because he seems to be landing heaps is i'm going to get these two out hopefully they can start putting down some uh damage they're not doing as much damage as i'd hoped actually oh they're doing a bit i suppose it is a dragon let's do that and we missed him dang um come on land again He's actually, this dragon's being pretty good. He's actually landing a fair bit. It could be because we're continuously, or I was draining him heaps of his ability to do stuff like that with the Storm Matronarch, so he was just landing instead. But I'm not exactly certain. It just kind of seems like he's landing really often compared to some other dragons I've had to deal with. Especially at this beginning fight. Like, look, he's landing again. Usually dragons are painful as, and they just keep flying and flying and never stop. Where is our other Dramora Lord run off to? Is he on the other side of this guy? Once we get another thing... Oh yeah, he's on the other side of this thing. Once you get dragons down to about half health, again, what is extremely handy or good knowledge to have, is once you get them down to that point, they won't take off again. Once you get them down to about half health, they kind of just stay on the ground and you don't have to worry about them flying away anymore. Which is extremely handy to try and like plan out how you're going to do something if you just have that bit of information that once they get down to half health, they won't fly off. Oh, looks like he's got a kill cam. There we go. You, a dragonborn. Jokes, that's me. Let's search this guy. So, here's the uh, the poor white run guard that he ate, obviously. Let's take the amethyst, the dragon bones, the dragon scales, and the 342 gold. And let's back up, make this super cinematic. Don't, don't, don't jump in the way, don't jump in the way, don't jump in the way. And here we go. Wowza, hey? How good. Let's chuck a save here. How good. Killed our first dragon of this playthrough. And it only took us to get to level 52. <laughs> Use the shouts section of the magic menu to equip your unrelenting force shout. Okay. Word of power learned. Force. Unrelenting force. Let's have a look. See what this is all about. Hey. So. Unrelenting force. Z. Use Z to shout. Optional. Use your new shout powder. Foos. Foos. Dragonborn. Dragonborn? What do you mean? 
In the very oldest tales, back from when there were still dragons in Skyrim, the Dragonborn would slay dragons and steal their power. That's what you did, isn't it? Absorb the dragon's power. I'm gonna be honest, I think you may be right. I don't know how else to explain what just yes, happened. I think I am. You can shout now. That can only mean one thing. You must be Dragonborn. Dragon? What are you talking about? That's right. My grandfather used to tell stories about the Dragonborn. Those born with the dragon blood in them. Like old Tiber Septon himself. I've never heard of Tiber Septon killing any dragons. There weren't any dragons then, idiot. They are just coming back now for the first time in forever. But the old tales tell of the dragonborn who could kill dragons and steal their power. You must be one. What do you say, Irla? You're being awfully quiet. Come on, Irla. She tell doesn't us. believe in the dragonborn. Believe in this dragonborn business? <laughs> Some of you would be better off keeping quiet than flapping your gums on matters you don't know anything about. So aggressive. Such a good character, but so aggressive. <laughs> so matter of fact. Now we know we can kill them. But I don't need some mythical dragonborn. Someone who can put down a dragon is more than enough for me. You wouldn't understand, Housecar. You ain't an orc. Ooh. Shots fired. I've seen plenty of things just as outlandish as this. I'd advise you all to trust in the strength of your sword arm over tales and legends. That was shouting, what you just did. Must be. You really are Dragonborn. Then. I must be really Dragonborn. She's very matter of fact and she does give out good advice. You know, you are better off trusting in your sword arm rather than tales and legends because, you know, after all, that could be wrong. The only thing that you can really uh, put your trust in is your own abilities and yourself and making sure that you are training up for the occasion because the tales and legends won't save you personally only your own uh merit your own individual characteristics and abilities will say if you don't even know why i'm talking about this i'm just saying she's a good character she's very well developed she's uh she, she's cool she's cool her whole thing going on especially if you talk to her a little bit more about why she's house call house carl and all that and why she protects the owl bolgriff and just uh just the language she uses as well as, and her character is very different to What's that? Wonder what that could be. Yeah, the language she uses as well is also very different to uh, any other uh, character really in the game. Like she uses quite a quite a a, a broad range of uh, different words, which are very interesting and actually caused me to look some of them up myself and learn them. It was pretty. It was pretty. Uh, pretty cool. Oh, what's going on here? We're causing no trouble. All we ask is to look for her. <laughs> I'm guessing this hasn't spawned correctly. Usually there's a guard Back. there. This is not over. Yeah, usually there's a guard there telling them off and telling them to leave and all the rest Unit. of it. We're looking for someone in White Run. We'll pay good money for information. Hmm, who are you looking for? A woman. Foreigner in these lands, Redguard like us. She is likely not using her true name. We will pay for any information regarding her location. We are not welcome here in White Rock, so we will be in Rorikstead if you learn anything. Why are you looking for this person? It's none of your concern. All you need to know is that we're paying for information. If that doesn't interest you, feel free to walk away. Who are you looking for again? We're looking for a fugitive who comes from Hammerfell. A Redguard woman. She may be somewhere in this city. And you're looking for this woman and you're willing to pay for information. You don't want to give out any more information even though you want information. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And you said feel free to walk away. You're being pretty difficult to deal with so I'm going to walk away. Hey, you're a Redguard woman. Are they going to give you any uh, any trouble? Hmm? Guess not. You might not have the scar on the face that they're looking for. If you recall uh, in a previous episode where they stopped some other poor woman on the road and were antagonizing her and harassing her, and she turned out not to be the one they were looking for. They're uh, they're pretty they're pretty. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know what the word to use them is. They're pretty annoying. They're pretty annoying. They're annoying. They're an annoying little group. Pretty persistent. I mean, I can't exactly remember what the crime is. Uh, what the crime is that apparently this red guard woman committed and why they're chasing her. But uh, they just don't seem like they're going about it the best way. Especially asking people for information and saying we're not giving you any more information Why to help you? with your search. Okie dokie. You heard the summons. What else could it mean? The Greybeards. We were just talking about you. My brother needs a word with you. So what happened at the Watchtower? Was the dragon there? The Watchtower was destroyed, but we killed the dragon. I knew I could count on Irileth. It, it was mainly me. Mainly me, to be honest. Um, when the dragon died, I absorbed some kind of power from it. So it's true. The Greybeards really were summoning you. It would appear that way. I mean, sorry, I'm not supposed to know this yet. <laughs> the Greybeards? Masters of the Way of the Voice. They live in seclusion high on the slopes of the throat of the world. What do these grey beards want with me? The dragonborn is said to be uniquely gifted in the voice. The ability to focus your vital essence into a thoom or shout. If you really are dragonborn, they can teach you how to use your gift. Didn't you hear the thundering sound as you returned to Whiterun? That was the voice of the grey beards summoning you to High Rothgar. This hasn't happened in centuries at least not since Tiber Septim himself was summoned when he was still Talos of Atmora Rungar calm yourself what does any of this Nord nonsense have to do with our friend here capable as he may be I don't see any signs of him being this what dragon ball Nord nonsense why you puffed up ignorant these are our sacred traditions that go back to the founding of the first empire Rungar don't be so hard on Avenich. I meant no disrespect, of course. You definitely did. It's just that you were being very disrespectful. Want with him. That's the Greybeard's business, not ours. Whatever happened when you killed that dragon, it revealed something in you, and the Greybeard's heard it. If they think you're dragonborn, who are we to argue? You'd better get up to High Hrothgar immediately. There is no refusing the summons of the Greybeards. It's a tremendous honor. I envy you, you know, to climb the 7,000 steps again. I made the pilgrimage once. Did you know that? High Hrothgar is a very peaceful place. Very disconnected from the troubles of this world. I wonder that the Greybeards even notice what's going on down here. They haven't seemed to care before. No matter. Go to High Hrothgar. Learn what the Greybeards can teach you. You've done a great service for me and my city, Dragonborn. By my right as Jarl, I name you Thane of Whiterun. It's the greatest honor that's within my power to grant. I assign you Lydia as a personal housecarl. And this weapon from my armory to serve as your badge of office. I'll also notify my guards of your new title. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble, now would we? No, we wouldn't. I'm honored to have you as Thane of our city, Dragonborn. I am honored to be Thane of Whiterun. And you, yes, my lord. Preventus Avenici. I meant no disrespect, of course. Quite literally crapping all over the traditions of the Nords and all their beliefs and everything they hold close to heart and everything just quite quite literally uh yeah quite literally being as disres as blatantly disrespectful as possible to be honest in any case let's have a look at the disenchanting table this is a very axe of white run summon daedra up to level 36 are sent back to oblivion so that has got the same enchantment as that really 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 cool um that really cool thing that we got from which which Daedric commander which Dramora commander was it? I can't remember the name, but it was I'm pretty sure it's called Scourge. 
just absolutely insane enchantment. I don't think I've actually seen the enchantment go up this high before. I'm not going to disenchant it though because it's the Axe of Whiterun and I'm not going to use that enchantment in anything else and I'm not going to disenchant a unique, uniquely named item just to have an enchantment that I'll never use again. In any case, who's this? The Jarl has appointed me to be your house, Carl. It's an honor to serve you. I'm a Thane. What does that mean? The Jarl has recognized you as a person of great importance in the hold. A hero. The title of Thane is an honor. A gift for your service. Guards will know to look the other way if you tell them who you are. So that's a really cool mechanic. I really like how they obviously name you Thane of Whiterun. You know it's you know it's got to be some kind of reward or some kind of title that's important or whatever. And then straight away you get you walk down the stairs and then they give you an explanation as to what it actually means. It's really good, um, really good flow of gameplay and just informing the player of what it is that they are and what kind of perks they'll get. Things like as he, as they've both said now, guards looking the other way. I think you can only use that speech check thing like once or twice i'm not sure but it's like basically if you do the wrong thing you have a bounty against you you can say you're thane yada 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 and they say oh sorry blah 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 and then they leave you alone basically but <gasps> what does a house carl do as my thane i'm sworn to your service i'll guard you and all you own with my life Pretty messed up, to be honest. I've got to say, pretty messed up. Uh, you can be the new follower that we have been looking for, and I like you a bit better because you know you're single-handed, sword and shield. You'll get in there, you'll get fired, and then you you know you got a bit to protect yourself. <gasps> Follow me. I need your help. Lead the way. I shall lead the way. Yeah, the whole premise of House Carl is uh, it's pretty messed up, to be honest. You know. <laughs> Just, uh, I'll protect you and all you own with my life. I understand things were a little bit different back in the old days. I mean, in Nordic culture specifically, uh, Norse culture, which is what uh, Skyrim and the Nords, they're kind of, um, what they're kind of based off of. So yeah, times were different and the value on human life was different and the belief, the belief of where you go after uh, life concludes was also different I guess which probably led to a lot of these traditions and I'm not the one to say whether or not they're wacky or they're normal you know that's not for me to judge I'm just gonna say it's a little bit um it's a little bit different from what I would like for myself or any of my loved ones this whole belief of protecting somebody else's property with your life because I would say that you know obviously quite obviously somebody else's property is never gonna be more important than your own life or I would never think that my own property was more important than somebody else's life would never really think that but I mean I guess I guess that's just kind of something I guess that's just how human culture has kind of evolved is to uh, place more value on some people's lives than others unfortunately it's just how everything kind of came about for us but anyway getting a bit off topic from good old Skyrim here where we are headed now let's have a look at the map we are headed up to high hrothgar to speak to the greybeards now i'm definitely going to be doing some horse finagling here Unf mm, actually there is a quest that we need to pick up in Iverstead that is really good to pick up along the way yeah we might skip out on the whole horse finagling situation here we might just run around the mountain and get to Iverstead now which way is better for the horsey finagling I'm gonna say this looks like it's a decent path to take this looks like it could be a decent path to take up around this side of the mountain here and then to Iverstead and then up the mountain again. Okay, so we've got a plan of attack. I've got a plan on how I want to get up there. I'm believing that's the little part there that I want to get up on the mountain. Let's start our wee little journey to Iverstead and let's start the horsey finagling fest because it is going to be a finagle fest, I assure you. What we might do actually on the way is clear out this uh, this little uh, this little thing up here. I wonder what that could be. A little crevice in the mountain. I wonder who could be using that. Let's uh, let's so let's have a look. See, let's see what we can find. Hey, and hopefully Lydia will be following on us in our little journey. Excuse me, little skeevy boy. I'm not going to deal with you right now. Kind of just want to keep pushing up here to see what this is all about hey what is this something new something fun something on the side to do that's kind of how i want this playthrough to go and i mean we're up to episode 33 by now so i'm sure you guys can tell how i want this playthrough to go 
or at least have an idea of how it's gonna go. It's gonna be like a little bit of a. Uh, where's my spells? There we go. It's gonna be a bit of a. You know, we do some quit. Stop that. Just, just get them going. There we go. It's gonna be a bit of a. Um, you know, we. You're gonna, you're gonna kill me if I let you, if I, if I'm not careful. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of you know sprinkle in main quest here. Even though it's taken 33 episodes to get to the main quest, <laughs> I'll rephrase that. It's going to be like a sprinkle in a quest here, sprinkle in some grinding here, sprinkle in this, that. You know, just keep changing it up. So, you know, we've just done some of the main quests, you know, and we're on our way to the next quest. But let's clear this out in between. That's kind of that's kind of how I've been running things in case you guys haven't picked up. Or in case this is the first episode you're watching. In which case, that's how I kind of do things, you know. Uh, this is like the long roundabout way of saying I get distracted and I just want to do things. <laughs> this is like my little, uh, it's my little way of getting out of it. In any case, what was the note we just picked up? It was note to Rudolph. Let's have a look. See, Rudolph, your little stunts try my patience. I know my uncle has issues, but he is our watchman and you will respect him. No more sneaking in and out. No more playing, no more games with his ledger or nails on his chair. No, one more joke and you'll see how funny a day in the cage can be. Have ya? So, I wonder what that could mean. They're playing jokes on the poor old watchman. I wonder why they'd be playing jokes on them. Let's uh, let's see if we can find out, hey? Eh? So he hasn't immediately aggroed us. I wonder why. Who's there? Ah, that's Hello? why. Is that you? Yes, it's Rudolph. Okie dokie, my friend. I always feel terrible about uh, about what I have to do next, but we'll, we'll have a look at your book. Ah, yes. A good read. A good read, indeed. I always feel absolutely terrible about what we might potentially have to do to him, depending on whether or not he uh, aggros. Hopefully he doesn't, because I don't, I don't enjoy just, you know... Uh, hurting him because you know he's just a he's just a dude living his life he hasn't done anything wrong to me and I think he might have aggroed and my Dramora are onto him like flies on some uh, some flies on what is a more appropriate word on feces flies on feces okay he still hasn't aggroed please don't aggro please don't aggro him Lydia I don't want to have to do anything to that poor old fella. Let's, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Let's get rid of her before she one-shots me. Uh, let's take her stuff. Gold, cooked beef, and yep. And let's keep pushing on forward. Chesty. I saw ya. I saw ya, and you know I gotta loot ya. Let's keep going. What is this? Potion of haggling? Why not? We definitely don't need it, but whatever. Let's pick it up, because I can. And you know me, whenever I can, I just kind of do... Ooh, steel soldier helmet. Do I want it? Uh, yeah, we'll give it to Lydia, actually. Yeah, let's give it to Lydia. Still here. I need to trade some things with you. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Mm-hmm. That iconic line. The age-old iconic line. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Let's give you this. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I'll equip that on myself. Give that to you. Give that to you. Give that to you. And why didn't you put on the glass armor? It's definitely better than the steel armor, isn't it? I mean, it's light armor, but it's definitely a higher level. It's definitely got a higher armor rating, I would say. Let's get these guys in here. Wow, these bandits are weak. They are so weak. They're all just base level bandits. This is like... This is insane. I thought we'd be coming across some... Uh, I don't know if that wolf was aggroed on me or not, but I kind of just killed it. I didn't I didn't know whether it was after me or whether it was going to take uh, revenge on these guys. Oh, well. These guys are uh, crazy, crazy easy, actually. This is going to be very, very quick. We're basically after... Sorry. After this guy, we're basically done. These guys are all just getting absolutely smacked. They're just getting absolutely backhanded by these Daedric Greatswords. Just getting smacked across the face. I don't need any food, to be honest. Another thing that I kind of found out is that, like... As good as cooking is, it's much easier just to buy everything you need off of the innkeepers because they all have cooked food anyway. And the cooked food they have is all really, really good food. Let's, uh, 
have ya. You definitely look like a bit of a tougher boy, that is for sure. You definitely look like you'll one-shot me if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run away like a coward. The old strats. Gonna quick save. And I'm gonna get you guys down there to help out Lydia because you're not doing your job up there. Let's search this chest. So we've got an emerald, 208 gold, scroll of dread zombie, a welkin stone, and sure, why not? Let's take it. Now, I didn't cast any fireballs because what I wanted to take was this bad boy. Glass greatsword. Why did I want to take it, you ask? I don't know. I just wanted to take it. I thought it might have been an enchanted an enchanted uh, glass sword. In any case, let's help out our friends here. This guy doesn't seem too strong. You know, for the ending, uh, for the end of the uh, little cave here, it doesn't seem very strong at all. But what he does have is heavy armor. So we can instantly upgrade you, Lydia. So... Iron Hand Gauntlets, a unique, in no, not a unique enchantment, but it is a good enchantment. So we'll take that, just in case I don't have it. I can't remember if I have it or not. We'll take some Dwarven Arrows and give them to Lydia. Take the gold. Havyar's Journal. We'll give that a read, because I'm all about the lore. Who was this guy? Was he, is he a Breton? Is he a Breton or an Imperial? Let's bring him over here. I think, or he could be a Nord, I don't know. I find it hard to tell the difference sometimes once the hairstyles back. kind of start all uh, amalgamating together, all kind of uh, blending I'm together. Okie dokie, let's give you a little wee bit of an upgrade. I think you'll appreciate this. So we're going to give you Nordic Carved Armor, heck yeah. Nordic Carved Boots, heck yeah. Nordic Carved Gauntlets, yeah. And a Nordic Carved Helmet. I'm not even mad that you're not putting that on, to be honest, because I absolutely love the uh, the steel plate helmet you've got on to be honest with all that stuff will we, we, we give you those no we'll hold on to those um and what else we'll give you the glass great sword choose to use it if you so wish i would give you the axe of white run because i'm pretty sure your one-handed is better than two-handed but i also yeah actually you know what? i'll give you the axe of white run yeah you'll absolutely demolish demolish people with it let's uh let's give you some daedric arrows yep Let's give you some dark arrows, yep, dwarven arrows, ebony arrows, golden arrows, jeez we have a lot of arrows for a character that doesn't do any archery, and I think that's, oh actually might, hmm, uh, I really need to get rid of these, that's gonna, that's gonna weigh me down a little bit, we'll keep, we'll, uh, we'll get Hilda out if we need to, we won't do it just yet because it's not really, we've still got a ton of carry weight to be honest, but uh, We'll keep those things specifically there in Misk in mind, the Dragon Bone and the Dragon Scales. We'll keep that in mind specifically for good old Hilda when we get a little bit too over encumbered. Now we're just gonna we're just gonna make our way down here very, very slowly. There we go. Very carefully, very slowly. We'll quick save here. And we'll jump on Glade. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have just been up there with Glade. It would have been very, it would have been way easier to, easier to just like, you know, finagle our way over the mountain from there. But uh, it wasn't to be. It just wasn't to be because you can't really bring Glade through that whole cave. So what we're going to do is finagle our way back up there anyway, which shouldn't be too hard because, you know, he's pretty, Glade, old Gladey right here. He's pretty good at a little bit of a finagle. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. You're getting there. You're getting there. You're getting there. Very, very close. So yeah, we're heading to Iverstead Iverst first. And oh, please do not just fall. Ooh, ooh, that was a that was a butt clenching moment right there. <laughs> that was a that was a scary moment. I thought we were about to break all four of Glade's legs, and then probably end up dying ourselves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick save here as well, and. Awesome, awesome. Love making our way over that huge chunk of mountain just to see that we could have gone around it much easier. Uh, are we making progress? Okay, we need to get to this part and then over that and then wrap around. So, guessing that is that part right there. It definitely looks like it could be and it looks like it's finagleable. So, let's give it a go at finagling. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, we're going to go to Iverstead and we're going to pick up a very, very easy quest. A very, very easy quest. And to be honest, I don't even know if it's level-based. I just remember it always pays out an astonishing amount for what it is you actually have to do. And are we in need of gold? To be honest, no. But it's also, you know, if I can do a quest, if I can complete a quest with this character 
and it's like no no skin off my teeth no no tip off my nose no you know no extra effort really required on my behalf then it's kind of like a why not do it you know what i mean why not why not get that little bit of extra content in there why not try and fill out the character and what he's doing a little bit more and this is looking like a pretty handy dandy pathway for us leading all the way up and over this part of the mountain wow z no more finagly business for us we have got a clear-cut path going over that's really really good um so we need to head back left we need to do we need we definitely need to make sure we're heading a hard left in that way that is the way around the mountain that we want to go so we're going to see if we can just go straight up here heck yeah we can come on come on this is what is so handy about having a horse man they just us trying to jump up here would not happen just would not happen 100 percent. but it's just something about the horse's owner just some oh no come on just something about the horses they can just they just seem to be able to like grab a foothold and just keep on punching up these mountains when you really should not be able to but just the way i don't know how the horses were uh, programmed or anything like that i'm not a game developer although i have a great amount of respect for game developers because it seems like the job would be extremely hard and then you're also getting you know outside pressures and people putting pressure on you to get certain things done and then if you especially these days you release something that is not necessarily complete because of the pressure of you know big corporate businesses that just want to make a sale and then your creation is pretty much dumped all over by the public and it's not really your fault it's not something that you wanted to release but it just kind of happened anyway a bit of a sidetrack there what i'm saying is is i don't know how the horses are programmed but they can just they really come on come on don't turn me into a lie now get up there get up there yeah, they just seem to be out there. We go. They just seem to be able to grab a foothold where your character usually uh, cannot grab a foothold at all. Like we would not be able to do this on foot at all. The horse is pretty uh, integral, important in this whole finagling business. There we go. And I feel like we are over the hunch that was going to give us the most trouble. Where are we sitting around about? We're pretty much already. We're around the back of High Hrothgar already. We're pretty much there. We're pretty much. <laughs> We're pretty much already at High Hrothgar, but I do want to go to Iverstead, and I'm pretty sure we even saw the uh, little icon of the castle thing for High Hrothgar, but I do want to go to Iverstead first and pick up this quest, and then we'll make our way back up the mountain. It shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't take too long, to be honest. I'm pretty sure it's not even 7,000 steps. I think someone counted it, and it's like only 10% of that. It was either it's only... I think somebody counted it, and... It's not. It wasn't seven thousand steps. Oh, I thought we we're about to break Glade's legs there. And it's not seven thousand steps. I believe from memory, it was either like something crazy, like ten percent of seven thousand steps, so like seven hundred steps is what there actually are, or something like half the amount, so like three thousand steps, I believe. And that's where we're going all the way down there. Let's. Uh. Oh no. Oh, I don't like this floaty stuff with the horse. This. Uh. We're gonna quick save here. I really don't like this floaty stuff with the horse. Oh, I really, really don't like it. I feel like we're going to fall at any given moment, and we're going to fall a great distance, and we're going to break Glade's legs. There there we go. There it is. Hopefully, there's no more of that floaty business, because horses don't float. Uh, I'm pretty sure one really good thing that isn't... It hasn't got me as scared as it usually might with regular horses. I'm pretty sure Glade's health is really, really, really high compared to a regular horse. And his stamina as well. If you notice, like, when we've been sprinting across the landscape, that his sprint lasts for a phenomenal amount of time compared to regular horses. But in any case, here we are. This is the man we want to see. On your way up to 7,000 steps again, Clement? Not today. I'm just not ready to make the climb to High Hrothgar. The path isn't safe. Aren't the Greybeards expecting some supplies? Honestly, I'm not certain. I've yet to be allowed into the monastery. Perhaps one day. I wish I could make my deliveries more often, but the road's getting dangerous. Klimic, you are the man we want to see. Hello. Passing through on your way to High Hrothgar? About to make a delivery up there myself. Is that so? Hmm? Anything you can tell me about High Hrothgar? I've been to the monastery many times, but I've never even laid eyes on one of the Greybeards. Not that I'd care to. Being masters of the Thum, they could kill you by uttering a single word. Well, excuse my tummy, it's just rumbling. They seem peaceful, but I wouldn't want to provoke them. 
Imagine talking to someone you just hear like... Mm-hmm. I know it happens plenty in real life, but it just seems like it happens a lot in this game because our dude is always peckish or famished or starving or just dying. I'm surprised he... Well, I guess I have him sprinting around everywhere. It's probably why he doesn't put on a little bit more size. What types of deliveries do you make to High Hrothgar? Mostly food supplies like dried fish and salted meats. You know, things that keep fresh for a long time. The Greybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. I catch your meaning. And in return... Surely you get something. Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. I could do it for you. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. I'm just a kind Here, kind of guy. Take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside, and you're done. Thanking you. Anything I should watch out for during the climb? Well, there's the occasional wolf pack or stray, but that's all I've ever had to deal with. Shouldn't be a problem for the likes of you. Ah, I see you recognize talent when you see it. Wintry conditions, the stairs can be treacherous. Wrinkly dunkly, wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. Well, how about the service as well? I mean, you are climbing a mountain every time you go to give them food. I, I don't know about you, but it doesn't matter who they are. I definitely would not feel bad about charging them for a for some preserved food in the service of climbing up a mountain every so often. I definitely would not feel bad about charging for the service. In any case, etched tablet. Let's give it a read. Emblem 1. Before the birth of men and before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all Mundus. Their word was the voice and they spoke only for true needs. For the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. Okie dokie. That's number one. Let's keep an eye out for number two. For some reason, I always miss the last one because it's right next to the monastery. And I always miss it. I don't know why. I don't know why I've always missed it, but I've just always, always missed it. No, cl no clue why. Absolutely no clue. It just, it just happens. It just happens. Uh, there was three dead goats back there. I'm guessing they are... Uh, they had an unfortunate birth in the sky and just kind of fell down and broke all their legs. And here's a bear. Let's try to ignore him. I don't want to have to deal with every single animal on the way up the mountain, but I'm guessing we might have to deal with this guy because he's going to be right on our tail. Yeah, there he is. Nice and annoying. Let's uh, let's get out spells when you're ready, Thorin. There we go. Let's do that and that. Make quick work of him. Emblem number two. Men were born and spread over the face of Mondas. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then and had no voice. Emblem number two, okay. Let's just smack him out of here. Come on, let's go, let's go. Looks like old Klimek was lying to us, eh? Just didn't want to put us off making this travel, saying, oh yeah, you'll only have to deal with a few, uh, a few wolves or a stray here and there. No, 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 good sir. Less than a quarter of a way up the steps and there is a cave bear. Don't tell me you didn't know about that cave bear, Klimek, because I would not believe you. I would not believe you. It just seems like you were trying to get someone to do your job for you. And how about that? Just a little bit down the pathway and a frost troll. I've never seen a frost troll this early on in the piece, though, so I'm going to guess this is probably, definitely, something to do with our level, to be honest. <laughs> our level is pretty crazy to be uh, level 52 heading up the path at this point. I would uh, be very surprised to see what we will see when you would usually see the Frost Troll, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. But no, come on, come on. Come on, Thorin, you can do it. There we go. So yeah, there's usually a more specific point. Let's do this, actually. Mara's Wrath. Keep us warm. That's what it's supposed to do. Let's get onto Glade. Pretty sure that's supposed to keep us warm. That's what it says it does anyway. Um, we, we will have to wait and see. But there's usually a more specific point where you would encounter your first frost troll and you'd be like, what? And obviously Klimek lied to you because you didn't just encounter a few uh, wolves or a stray dog or so. Uh, you encounter a fair few of these. Uh, uh, you encounter one of these things at a specific time. And now it's seeming like because of our level... We are encountering a whole lot of them, and it's not good at all for our uh, 
for our health either because we are spending a lot more time on this mountain than we want to and we are getting very very cold very 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 cold indeed so we are going to have to how did that Dremora Lord die we're gonna have to try and make very quick work of these guys as we go up or I'm just gonna I'll probably take this one I'll probably kill this one and then after that more than likely just going to leave them just gonna try and run past them because I yeah we just can't take them we just can't take every single one like look at my health I'm already on the brink of dying oh my goodness survival mode survival mode survival mode survival mode yeah we're gonna have to just read these etched tablets and run because <laughs> our, our health ain't looking so good emblem number three the fledging spirits of men were strong in old times unafraid to war with dragons and their voices but the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts Ooh, poor men hey poor men having their hearts broken by a few mean dragons they just they obviously didn't care what the they didn't, they didn't care about the meaning of words and how every word has a meaning so treat it carefully they obviously didn't they obviously just said whatever they wanted. I don't know. I'm just blabbering now. I'm just really, really nervous about this uh, this health bar here because it's going down rather quick. Yeah, we are definitely going to have to skip every single other thing that we come across. Definitely cannot do it. Oh, I'll, how I would love to talk to you to get some lore, but we just cannot. I am so sorry. Karita, you sound awfully familiar or awfully similar to Katraya. Anyway, emblem IV, meaning four in Roman numerals. Kind called on Parthenax, who pitied man. Together they taught men to use the voice. Then dragon war raged. Dragon against tongue. And let's keep going, Glade. Please don't do that annoying little turnaround thing that you do because I really need to just be able to jump on you and keep going. We're not looking good here. Let's, uh, let's pull out our torch. Because that Mara's Wrath thing keeps running out. So that's emblem number four. Oh, jeez. We still have a ways to go. I got a bad feeling we're actually just going to die. We're definitely just going to die. So yeah, this is the usual part where you would typically uh, encounter the troll. The first troll. But we've already encountered two. We're going to have to quickly read this and jump back on Glade. So emblem number five. Man prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world. Proving for all... That their voice was, that their that their voice too was strong, although their sacrifices were manifold. Okay, no glade, 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 glade. We cannot, we cannot afford to do this right now. We cannot afford to do this. Come back. We need to run. I just need to keep running. That's all I need you to do, glade. I don't need you to take on any extra responsibilities. We just need to run. Ah, uh, this isn't looking good. This is not looking good. We still have a little ways to go, and we aren't. The icon for it isn't even showing up yet. Um, might have to skip the rest of these emblems, unfortunately, because we're going to die. Yeah, we're definitely not going to make it. My guy's about to just go, ooh, and phase through the horse as he ragdolls. There we go. <laughs> okay, okay, let's see how far back we have been sent. Hopefully not too far back. Please, oh, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is... Oh boy, this is really far back. We still gotta go talk to Klimek again. Okie dokie. I will, uh, I'll try and prepare us a little bit better for the journey up the mountain and you guys have already seen me kill the frost trolls so I won't worry about killing them this next time around. I'll just kind of skip past them and get back up to where we were. Hopefully with a wee bit more health under our belt. Uh, might have been... Oh no. Oh my god. Goodness, that is a good amount of health that you have there, Glade. My gosh, I do not know how you survived that. Every other horse would die. Yeah, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to go back down there. I might even go into the inn and sleep until it's daytime. So hopefully we will stay warm for a bit longer instead of doing this at night time. Quite, uh, quite the death sentence I set us up for. In any case, I'll get us back to where we were. And here we are around about back to where we started and doing, or where it ended, sorry, and doing a heck of a lot better. Will do, my friend. Emblem number four. Yes, we already read this one, but what we missed was a conversation with you, Karita, awfully similar to Katraya. Huh? Did you hear the Greybeards called Dovaki? I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. 
Nothing like this has happened in centuries. Who are you? Just a pilgrim. I'd prefer to leave it at that, if you don't mind. Okay. Well, what are you doing? Walking the steps. Meditating on the emblems. I make this trip every few years. Heck yeah, that's cool. Sounds like a bit of an interesting life you lead. You seem like a pretty uh, spiritual person. Believing in uh, hard work and such. And, uh, you know, going through a little wee bit of uh, pain and probably a bit of uh, fatigue in order to better yourself. And this is... He's not there this time. Ah, oh, there he is. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Hello. Yes, I will not be. Uh, I will not be giving you any attention today. Just like I haven't given your friends any attention because it's just too cold for such things. Let's read this. Emblem number five. Man prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world, proving for all that their voice too was strong, although their sacrifices were manifold. And let's jump back on Glade. Yeah, so essentially what I did was, I went back down the mountain, got the quest off Klimic, then instead of going back up the mountain straight away, I went to the inn, got some food, had some sleep, restored everything to 100%, waited until it was daytime so it wouldn't be so dang cold and just killing us instantly, and then I just ran up and I've pretty much skipped every enemy that there has been. The cave bear, the two frost trolls were there again, plus that last frost troll we just came past. Uh, they were all there. I've kind of skipped them all because, you know, just survival mode, the health going down, the cold, you just can't afford to to uh, to fight them because it's not actually them that kills you, it's just the cold. Emblem number six. With roaring tongues, the sky children conquer, founding the first empire with sword and voice whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Interesting. Glady, jump back on you and keep on running through. I believe... Oh, there's another... These two are pretty close by to each other. Maybe this is the one I usually miss. I know there's usually one I always miss and I can never... I never understand why I miss it because you shouldn't miss them. They're all pretty visible. <gasps> Emblem number seven. The tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled. Jürgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation to understand how strong voices could fail. A seven-year meditation. My goodness. When I've tried meditation in the past, and I don't, I'm, I'm definitely not knocking on meditation. I actually believe it to be something that can be pretty good for you if you can really get into it and, uh, connect with it really well and like can get your mind into that kind of headspace but uh i set like a timer on my phone for 10 minutes and try to meditate and that feels like eternity as so i'm probably not doing it right to be honest but to meditate for seven years or eight years whatever it was absolutely insane absolutely insane anyway emblem number eight jürgen windcaller whose silence chose silence and returned the 17 disputants could not shout him down. Jürgen the Calm built his home on the throat of the world. So Jürgen Windcaller became Jürgen the Calm, hey? Very interesting. I think I've actually missed that little detail. I think I've missed that little de detail. So I'm guessing in the lore that means he was obviously once a, a little bit of a warlord or some such kind of thing. And then after the, his seven years of meditation... He chose to come back, and it's probably he's probably who started this order, I would say, the Greybeards. Let's read this one, the etched tablet. So, emblem number nine. So, the X means ten, and the one, the little stroke of I before it means one less than ten. So, it's nine. For years all silent, the Greybeards spoke one name, Tiber Septim. Strip Stripling then was summoned to Hrothgar. They blessed and named him Dovakin. So that's number nine. And there's Lydia. Hey. Good of you to good of you to join us. You've probably been running your little legs off while I've just been riding Glade up here. And here's High Hrothgar. High Hrothgar discovered. And now let's read the final uh, emblem. So number ten. The voice is worship. Follow the inner path. Speak only in true need. Okay. Voice of the Sky added, so an active effect has been added. To be honest, I'm pretty sure it's uh, a little wee bit useless because it doesn't stay with you for very long. So yeah, animals will neither attack nor flee from you for 23 hours. So basically 24 hours, a full day. 
That would be useful coming up the mountain, <laughs> not once you're already at the top, but all good. Because I would say once you're from here, you usually fast travel anyway, and then there's like maybe two hours left somewhere. If you're not in survival mode, that's what you would usually do for us. I mean, maybe it will be worth it if we decide to run all the way back down. But in any case, here's the chest to place Klimix supplies. Man, not being able to get central with these keys is annoying me. There we go. That's just going to have to do. <laughs> So you want to go into your misc items and drop off, where is it? Klimix supplies store. So bring the supplies to Hyrothgar, return to Klimix. As I've said before, the the payout for that is pretty insane for what it is because it's it's really like an on your way kind of thing. Like it really does not, it, it does not force you to go out of your way at all for it, man. You were looking really sick with that steel plate helmet and that Nordic carved armor. You were looking really, really cool, Lydia. I have to say, I have to say. But in any case, that is going to have to do it for today's episode. I'm going to pause it instead of leaving it how I usually do because our guy is just slowly going to be getting frozen toesies and he's going to slowly die. But thank you so much for watching this video. Please, please, please like and subscribe. You have no idea how much I would appreciate it. Turn on the notification bell. Leave any comments. Ask me any questions you have. Leave any recommendations you have. Even just drop by and say g'day. I will respond to every single comment. I promise. I absolutely love the interaction. I absolutely froth the interaction. <sighs> but regardless of what you do, whether or not you like or comment or subscribe or turn on, or turn on the notification bell, please... Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.